Okay, part two. Uh, AK Buyer's Guide from 79 Twitch. Woohoo, this is going to be cool. Uh, this part's all about what to look for after you pretty much already have uh, your rifle. Rifle in hand, still at the FFL. Whether you bought it there, or you, you had them ship it in from uh, somebody that has a warranty, you can send it back. Oh, here. For the purposes of this video, there you go. I got a good Yugo mag in there with the magazine catch, or the bolt catch, so. And it's unloaded, so all you safety salaries don't have to freak freak out, flip shit. Oh, he's looking down the barrel, we're good. Nobody cares. Okay, as you can see, there is a slight bit of cant over on this side over here. Get my back up. Not necessarily a big deal. It doesn't really affect accuracy that much. Uh, then when you look at it straight down, load it up, you can see it is cant. The front side is canted a little bit. Not really too bad. Like I said, not enough to affect accuracy. Uh, talk about accuracy real quick. Accuracy is not one of AK's strong suits, so don't expect you're going to buy uh, the, an RPK because it's got a longer barrel. You expect a uh, 762 by 39 round to go 1,000 yards. Uh, it's, it'll go 1,000 yards possibly, but uh, it won't do it accurately. <laughs> so, as you can see, those sides are a little canted. Um, oh, that has a uh, regular butt stuck in there. There. Don't want to click. Safety's on. And there, I'll get on the floor. As you can see with that, those sides are pretty much straight. Go ahead and look. Very easy to tell that the gas block is in line with the rear side. Uh, also, take a look at your rear training. Uh, make sure those are lined up. As you can see with this one, the rear training is a hair off about as much as the front side. But again, uh, the way it is, it's fairly accurate up to like 200 meters or something like that. Up to about 300 yards. Uh, you're really not going to be shooting anything too much farther away than 300 yards. At least I hope not. If so, then you probably need to buy a different kind of rifle. Uh, so you checked out the sights. Sights are good. Uh, crap, I knew I forgot something. If, uh, before you get your gun, when you're still thinking about what you want to get, uh, you need to take into consideration barrels. Okay, the AMD 65, the uh, Wasser 1063, and the AES 10B, those three have chrome line barrels, hammer forged chrome line barrels. The M92 Pat PV shoots, uh, or shoots, it has a, a standard steel barrel. It's all steel. Uh, the Yugos have them. I guess the new uh, Zestavas have them. Uh, my Polish AK had one, and I think, don't quote me on it, but I think Arsenal has standard steel barrels. Is that a big deal? Depends. Do you shoot non corrosive ammo? If so, then it's not a big deal. If you shoot corrosive ammo, yes, it's a very big deal. You can rot out your barrel, uh, it'll rust up. Affect accuracy could possibly be dangerous, not good. If you do have a steel barrel and you shoot corrosive ammo, shoot and before you even leave, uh, take some Windex, run down the barrel. I heard that works pretty good. Uh, at least try to get it halfway clean, get home, and then just scrub and then soak it in oil. You know, keep that barrel, baby that barrel. Chrome line, not necessarily that big of a deal. Uh, it is important to clean out your gas block. I don't know if the gas block's chrome lined or not. Uh, but always try to clean your rifles. Uh, a clean gun's a happy gun. Uh, I recommend chrome line or not. At least run a swab through the barrel. Uh, the Wasser 1063 really hasn't had any 
good cleaning besides a barrel swab in quite some time. <laughs> uh, but everything else is uh, pretty much squeaky clean, dripping oil. Just how they're meant to be. Uh, so yeah, barrel, important to look at and important to think about. Do research on it before you jump into something. All right. Now back to what else to look for. As you can see, check out rivets. Uh, as you can see, this rivet is in fairly deep, along with this one a little bit. That one's not that bad. That one's pressed in pretty bad. Uh, it's not necessarily a big deal. I haven't noticed any issues, uh, but that might be an issue later on down the road. That one's pressed in a little too hard as well, uh, but the ones right up there on the trunnion seem to be pretty flush as you can see on the path uh, very flush you don't see any indention where they press that in too hard uh, except down there at the corner but other than that it's pretty good quality rivets uh, grab rivets run your finger over them make sure they don't spin uh, believe it or not that's kind of important uh, Make sure all the rivets are good. <clears throat> Shouldn't really be any issues if it's a higher quality AK. Like the 1063 is a lot better than just regular washer tent. Uh, but in any case, I do it with every AK I come across. I still do it. Uh, talk a little bit about mag wobble. Mag wobble. Some guns have it, some guns don't. You can see... The AMD 65, or you can at least hear it, it has mag wobble side to side and front to back. Side to side is not a big deal. Uh, front to back is. If it's front to back, the bolt could skim right over around, not loading it, or it could just barely grab it, ram it in uh, to the lower part, uh, just below the barrel, and cause uh, a failure. Not necessarily catastrophic. Fairly simple to, to clear out, but that could be an issue. Uh, and, of course, with all uh, instances like that, it might not be your gun. It could also be the magazine. You have to at least consider that. Uh, but anyway, front to back is bad, side to side. Not a big deal. Kind of annoying. The way I fixed it, put a strip of electrical tape there. And it's quieter than it would have been. Uh, AES-10... Oh, crap. That's AES-10B. Uh, Walser 1063. No mag wobble with this good Yugo mag in there. And same with the uh, AES 10B. Uh, it's got a little bit. Uh, nothing really to be too concerned about. <clears throat> uh, another thing that could be an issue uh, for magazines. Let me take this thing out. Uh, take those out. Uh, with the Magwell. You can see how sloppy that is, how he came, uh, the company, Century Arms, came in and milled that out. There's a lot of rough edges. You can see where they start and stop. Uh, you can see how it's thinner down here than it is up here. The thickness change, you can tell that it's overall thicker over here than it is over here. That is not a really good mag or magwell. Um... But I don't have any issues with it. Now we'll go to the AES. Or I don't know why I keep wanting to say that. AMD 65. You can see the overall size is about the same on the or equal uh, sides on both sides. Uh, you don't see any burrs sticking up anywhere. They're not supposed to be. Uh, you can run your finger across it and not get cut. That's a, a pretty decent magwell. The PAP. The PAP has an excellent magwell. I uh, think this side is one thousandth of an inch thicker than this side, which really, that is not a big deal at all. You can't even tell where they start and stopped. That is another high quality uh, magwell. Put the mags back in there because they look cool. Uh, that is a Romy, or a Russian Bakelite. 
That's a Chinese and this is a Yugo. That's Korean. Got all kinds of different countries of origin. 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 Not orange. Origin. Um, something else you need to look at. Uh, with the Walsh 1063, you notice that it's fairly flat right here. Uh, you notice with the uh, AMD 65, it's got a mag well dimple or magazine dimple. The PAP's got a mag dimple. Uh, some people say if it's got a mag dimple, then it is uh, higher quality. Here, I'll show you. Uh, you can see on the inside, maybe, there you go, where that dimple comes in right there and help hold the magazine in. Well, that, that'll solve mag wobble, won't it? Then how come the uh, 1063 don't have mag wobble? Because, unlike the dimples, see, that has dimples and that, that wobbles. These actually have rails on the inside. You can see where they tack weld them in there. They have rails on the inside that uh, help hold the magazine in place. So just because it don't have mag dimples does not mean it's lesser of a quality. And that it, it guarantees that the magazine will wobble like uh, some people will say. Because it does not. And again, it all depends on uh, magazines. I've had magazines, or I've had one magazine that won't even fit in there. I've had a magazine that won't fit in any of my AKs except my Polish. Figure that one out. Uh, but I since got rid of both the magazine and the Polish, so. Um, guess we can touch on muzzle brakes real quick before we run out of time. Uh, you can get standard no muzzle brake. Uh, if you buy an AK, the most common brake you will find is these little slant cut brakes. Uh, it helps a little bit with muzzle climb, but uh, earn that, they're pretty much useless. Uh, you got the, uh, the AMD muzzle brake. That's more or less a muzzle extension as opposed to a brake. Uh, the AK-74 style, which takes away pretty much all recoil and all muzzle climb, makes this gun very pleasant to shoot. <clears throat> then there, I got the uh, RPK Tapco uh, slot brake on there, and that helps with uh, muzzle climb and a little bit of recoil. Uh, you can also get uh, bird, different kinds of bird cage flash hiders. You can get uh, um, tactical muzzle brakes. Uh, I don't know who makes it, but it's like. It's a R A Z or yeah R A Z R or something like that. The razor uh, where it's got like three prongs and it goes into like you can stab it into drywall and sheet metal and knock out glass and stuff like that. You can get custom or specialty brakes like that for tactical purposes. Uh, you can get brakes that resemble door breachers for shotguns and stuff like that. Uh, Pretty much endless. Um, I'm running out of stuff to talk about. Uh, some AKs have bayonet lugs, some don't. Depends if they're post band or pre band, and of course, uh, types. The only one that has a bayonet lug is the uh, Walser 1063. The pistol don't. The uh, AMD don't and RPK don't. Of course, the way those those three are designed, they're not meant to have bayonets. Uh, and the one I got a bayonet lug on, uh, you can't fit a bayonet with that muzzle brake. Um, I really don't know what, what else to say. Uh, if I think of anything, uh, expect part three. If you don't see part three, then... I've already rewatched these videos and I haven't came up with anything. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you want to know which one I prefer, which one I don't, I'm not going to say on video. I'll say uh, privately between me and you. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know.
send me a message, whatever. Other than that, that's been, uh, wow, I'm pretty terrible at ending videos. I guess I'll just hit the record button again.